I, when I got out of law school, I made my law practice federal contract advice and litigation. And that's one of the ways that I was very successful financially and with reputation. And I also helped start a business, which explains a lot of the rest. The business was called Systems Consultants. Uh, and uh, it was what was known euphemistically in those days as a beltway bandit. <laughs> These were consultants to the federal government. The net grew up during the McNamara period. Another guy, a guy named uh, Jose Iglesias and I started Systems Consultants, and that was in 1966, and we, we sold it in 1986 for almost $100 million. Oh. Actually, the Eastern Shore came before that stale because we bought this house in July 83, and I did that out of a very successful uh, legal career. Uh -huh. I was president of the congregation here for three years and on its board for many more years. But I also, for six years on each board, was on three Jesuit school boards. For five years each, I was elected by the board to be chairman of the academic committee. And that's not because they didn't know that I was Jewish. They knew exactly who they were uh, electing to that. And I think it's unusual to have been president of a synagogue and be the academic chairman of two Jesuit school boards. The, the president of Georgetown Prep, who's still a very good friend of ours, I said to him, Bill, what do we mean by a Catholic education in an indignation environment? What are we really trying to do? And he says, the thing that we try to do was to instill in them a sense of be a man for others. And I now understood what the Ignatian environment in which they wanted to teach was. And that night I got into the first time I had started discussing anything, and we started discussing moral theology. But I had been concerned about one thing, and that was I didn't understand how we could try people at Nuremberg for acts which were lawful and ordered by the Nazi regime when they ran Germany. We were required to take a course in jurisprudence, which was taught by an old Jesuit priest in his 80s named Francis Lucy. And during that course, a number of times, he talked about natural law. And at one point, that resonated with me. And I suddenly said, of course, there are laws which a temporal sovereign does not have the power and the right to make. And one of those laws is to decide who is and is not human. Which was, of course, the question about how you could do the not, how you could try the Nazis. And the whole question which we still look at under American law is, what do you do about illegal orders? And illegal orders, you're supposed to recognize them and not follow them. And that's what Nuremberg was all about. Yes, I say that the first line of Genesis has been mistranslated, even by Jewish translators. The usual translation is, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The actual language in Hebrew is different, and the first line, which is relatively short, is Bereshit bora Elohim et hashamayim v'et ha'oretz. The beginning brought forth Elohim, and I'm going to go into that word in a moment, of the heaven and the earth. 
if you look at the fourth gospel, he says in the beginning was the word, but that's a translation into English. In Greek, he would have said logos. So I take the word Elohim, which is a plural word, always taking a singular, a plural noun, always taking a singular verb, and I, and it's the first time that it appears in scripture, and I translate it at that moment as logos, the order, the beginning created, the moral, and the physical orders two separate realms, and two separate sets of philosophies. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, that's, that's where it starts. In, on uh, October 26th, 1965, Pope John Paul VI published an encyclical called Nostra Aetate, and it came out of Vatican II. And Nostra Aetate changed at least 1,700 years of the church's, Catholic Church's teaching because it went from saying they were the only path to a path which really calls for brotherhood. And that's where I think we should be heading. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, George Washington, and Harry Truman all said one thing about tolerance. It was an ugly word because tolerance indicates personal sufferance. Brotherhood accepts the humanity of all men. And that's where I hope we're going, and that's what I hope we see.